by uh, terrorist groups, by armed groups. And after some time, they were not allowed to convene their, uh, their meetings. They are the legitimate one, and they were not com allowed to convene their meetings in Tripoli. So now they are meeting in Tobruk. Now the United Nations solution is calling for a, a political solution. We, are, we agree with the political solution, but the problem is that you impose weapon and arms embargo on the legitimate government, and you let the other groups supplied by smuggled arms through the, the sea. That's why we are calling for a naval blockade. And you are calling also, they are calling for a political dialogue. How we make a political dialogue with somebody who is using force, who is, who is violent. Renounce violence and come and sit on the table that we discuss political. But the problem is that uh, uh, the Libyan government has the army. The Libyan government did not want any ground troops, like some, some European countries and some forces want to send ground troops. They don't want Egyptian ground troops. They have their own ground troops, but without weapons. So we are in a situation that calls for those legitimate government to control their country and to, call, and to have a, a national army, not a national army without, without arms, confronted with different terrorist groups, which has the most sophisticated arms, like the, like, exactly like in Boko Haram. Like El Shabaab, they have the Boko Haram has tanks, has armed vehicles. They have very sophisticated arms, and this is, of course, is meant to destabilize Libya. And as you know, Your Excellency, Libya means Egypt, means Chad, means Mali, means means Boko Haram, means means Shabaab at the other side. They are all the same. They have all back, the same back background. And uh, uh, this, is, this is very important. So we are now calling, now the, what is the situation in the Security Council? We uh, presented a, a resolution uh, handed by the, uh, uh, Jordan and discussed by Egypt and Libya to, uh, to lift arm embargo from the government and to control borders. And we are, okay, yani we are, okay, we, we, we don't have any objection to the to, to the political solution, but with those with those parties who renounce uh, violence and terrorism, you cannot discuss with somebody who is uh, who is still using weapons and arms and try to enforce his uh, position by, by by arms, and to open the way for for help. For, for helping the, uh, the, 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 the legitimate government of Libya. And this is, this is very, very crucial. And uh, of course, what's going to happen there, we talked with the, the Arab uh, group, with the African group, we have represented there uh, Nigeria, we have Angola, we have Chad. So we talked with the, with the, with the different uh, uh, African uh, and Arab uh, representative. Uh, what's going to happen? Well, I don't know. We still uh, just presented last last night, uh, last yesterday, and uh, of course with discussions. Uh, also, I, I did not mention that the minister also is attending the uh, because we are a member of the coalition against Daesh, uh, but uh, but we think that Daesh is not only Iraq and Syria. We think Daesh. It should be Daesh everywhere, and it should be not only Daesh everywhere, it should be Boko Haram, it should be Shabab, because as I said, it could touch anybody. And as, as, I, as I heard from, from Accra, that uh, maybe one of them from Ghana. Maybe one of them is uh, from Ghana, but we are not sure, we are not sure up to this moment. So. We are, uh, of course, how can we be sure? Because we don't have their, their bodies were demolished and, and you know. So uh, uh, what I want to say that uh, this action was meant to give a clear message. And uh, that uh, uh, in Libya, uh, Libya is a different case. Because in Libya is, um, we have there, we don't know how, how many people we have there. 
but it is some people say one million two hundred thousand some people say two million uh, most of them are living there married there uh, little of them just workers and teachers and who are who we are concentrating now to return them back because now they are targeted by the terrorist groups it's not an easy matter we managed to uh, to get back uh, around uh, 350,000 uh, but uh, but still we we of course I, I would like to praise uh, our brothers in Tunisia they uh, opened borders their uh, president uh, made it for, for free no visa no charges for visa and uh, of course uh, because they are very poor people who go there and uh, it was very sad uh, story and all of them come from where i come from in many uh, i hope i answered your thank you tennessee please uh, thank you very much excellence for the briefing once again, we wish to extend our condolences to the to the government and the people uh, of Egypt, and also uh, to indicate uh, our support. Uh, we really appreciate also the the resolve and the determination uh, to fight against uh, terrorism by by the government. I wish just to draw attention to the fact that, uh, uh, as you would remember last week, uh, there was a report that there were now threats that were directed to foreigners, embassies, official residences, and so on. So I wish to, to report that uh, as South Africa, we now have received a threat, and um, <clears throat> and uh, I think uh, it's it's very clear and unambiguous. Because uh, if I may read it, uh, Your Excellency, <clears throat> uh, it was hand delivered. It was received through the post. Yeah. Personally, to Her Excellency, the Ambassador of South Africa in Cairo, read the address, sender, Alexandria, Governor Reed. So the envelope is postmarked, uh, Alexandria City. It says... Sir? Yes, yes. Her Excellency, the Ambassador, my greetings. We hold you, along with the President of your country, responsible for supporting and backing the military coup, detached and keeping silent about the crimes this military regime is committing. If you do not reserve, uh, reverse this position, you will face very grave consequences yourself, yourself along with your expatriate community of South Africans in Egypt. We are warning your country against participating in the economic conference in Sham, in Sham because your blood is by no means dearer than our blood and the blood of our youth are not dearer than the blood of ours. Your next companies and interests will be targeted by us and if we don't see you taking a firm position against the coup, you will only have yourselves to blame. We are a dignified and prideful people who will not tolerate humiliation on the soil of our beloved country, Egypt. So get ready for the worst as a result of supporting the military coup. So that is the essence, uh, excellency, of the letter that we received as South Africa. We received it as a, in Arabic, but then we translated it for our understanding in our office. I will leave the copy with yourselves uh, to, to, to look at. Just excuse me, just for 
half a minute. I have a telephone call to make because I was uh, about to receive somebody to come to uh, join us here. One, just half a minute, please. Um, Your Excellency, I'm sorry for that. I tried to get a there's a telephone call, but um, uh, sorry for. Uh, okay. The uh, the security organs they are aware of of the of the uh, of this and they are taking all the measures necessary, and of course they don't want any success to. To, uh, as, as you said, for the uh, uh, roadmap or for the economic uh, conference, and uh, they are trying to reverse. And uh, thank God, thank God, people. Uh, of course, we are like we are Africans. We are, we don't uh, we, we 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 just sing uh, uh, Egyptian songs, but we don't. But the last two weeks, so uh, witnessed the. The, um, the the start of a, of an Egyptian will, the Egyptian the people's will. We've seen few days ago, uh, about two weeks ago, some they tried to burn, the, and they are Muslim Brotherhood who does not believe. He goes and see the news of the nine nine o'clock every night. Last yesterday they caught four. Two days ago they caught about five. One of them doctor. He, he prepare bombs and he's Muslim Brotherhood. He's not any other. He's a Muslim Brotherhood. He's a doctor and the second one is an engineer. Imagine a doctor who is treating people, putting a bomb to kill people in a civilian place. They are Muslim Brotherhood, for sure. And yesterday in Damaita and before in Port Said, they were trying to burn and explode the transformer. Every day, you can, if you want to see, you go and see them. But this is the action of the week. They want to, to do anything to reverse the course. The course will not be reversed. You've seen a few days ago, three very, very poor people. One of them is an old man and two youths. They found the bomb beside the petrol station. They got the bomb with their hand and they went away and threw it somewhere very far. It's the will of the people. We are going to. We are not going to let them succeed. They are in the last phases. They were born in Egypt and they will die in Egypt. And sorry to say that they are born in Egypt in 1929. And as I said in the in my last speech, every time Egypt has a course, they come and put other course. And for example, when Saad Zaghloul in 1919 came from. And uh, he, he was calling for Egyptian independence. Those Muslim Brotherhood came, Hassan al-Banna came with another line. He wants to ma make an Islamic state. Again, it happened in 1965. With the same things they are doing now, exactly what they are doing now. Burning petrol station, uh, uh, railway station, railway lines. They are doing this exactly the same. They were caught, they put in prison and executed. Exactly what's going on now is they are going to be finished, and uh, and uh, even even the support out, outside is uh, they are dismantling. They are, they are not the same as before. What happened in Libya shows you that even they are only 10 percent. They got only 10 percent. In Egypt here, in the first election, the parliament was 75 percent. In in Libya, 10 percent. But those 10% want to impose their, imagine in any country that 10% want to impose its opinion or the position on the others. But things are moving fast and we are, uh, we receive now, uh, if, you, if you don't know, we receive 30 of uh, prominent African uh, journalists now uh, for uh, seven or eight days and I, I met them few days ago and I told them you are here free to see by yourself and to contact anybody and tell us we, we make them uh, of course a program and we ask them if they want to change a program we are not going to interfere you just come here as brothers to see what's going on we invited from South Africa also because in South Africa they are trying you know these groups what they call themselves Egyptian revolutionary or Egyptian parliament 
or as I said, they have double messages. They have double messages. Message telling you that I'm peaceful and I'm calling for peaceful coexistence. And the other message in Arabic, and I, I, we, we handed to you last, uh, last time. In Arabic, they say that jihad and you have to be martyrs and, 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 and the English message, they send it to the people. And this is the message sent by if you go to Al Jazeera, Arabic is different than Al Jazeera English. Al Jazeera English shows you that they are peaceful and they are uh, trying to, 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 to be part of the Egyptian, but this, uh, uh, what they call uh, military coup, and uh, you know, this, this is, will not succeed, I, I'm, I assure you. And uh, please, let us be in, in a very close contact, and they, you have my number. Uh, the security organs are aware of that, and they are trying to do their best. Um, and I think you have the numbers, I, all of you have the numbers of the security organs, they, because they told us that you, you already contacted, many, many of the embassies contacted them.